the big companies like iPhone are using the same technology that makes you believe that your camera has a good function of taking selfies and it has a very sharp photos. Yes, it's a technology called Aperture. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Cinema Shoot Masterclass. So let's talk about aperture. In optics, an aperture is a hole or an opening through which light travels. More specifically, the aperture and focal length of an optical system determines the cone angle of a bundle of rays that comes to a focus in the image plane. An optical system typically has many opening or structures that limits the ray bundles. Ray bundles are also known as pencil of light. Research about it. These structures may be the edge of a lens or a mirror or a ring or other fixture that holds an optical element in place or maybe a special element such as diaphragm or diaphragm placed in the optical path to limit the light admitted by the system. In general, these structures are called stops and the aperture stop is the stop that primarily determines the ray cone angle and the brightness at the image point. The word aperture is also used in other contexts to indicate the system which blocks off light outside a certain region. So, Two factors of aperture we're going to discuss. First one, the size of a stop is the one factor that affects the depth of the field. Smaller stops, larger the F numbers, produce a longer depth of field, allowing objects at a wide range of distance from the viewer to all in be focused at the same time. The stop is the second factor. The stop limits the effect of optical aberration. So if the stop is too large, the image will be distorted. More sophisticated optical system designs can mitigate the effect of aberration, allowing a larger stop and therefore greater light collecting ability. A larger aperture stop requires a larger diameter optics, which are heavier and more expensive. The aperture stop of a photographic lens can be adjusted to control the amount of light reaching the film or image sensor. In combination with variation of shutter speed, the aperture size will regulate the film's or image sensor degree to exposure of light. Typically, a fast shutter will require a larger aperture to ensure sufficient light exposure, and a slow shutter will require a smaller aperture to avoid excessive exposure. Okay, so how does this technology work? There is a device called diaphrag or diaphrag, usually serve as an aperture stop, and it controls the aperture. The diaphrag function much like the iris of the eye, it controls the effective diameter of the lens opening. Reducing the aperture size provides more light to sensor and also increases the depth of field. Okay, in general, the smaller the aperture or the larger of the number of the f-stops, the greater the distance from the plane of focus. The subject matter may be while it's still appearing in focus. The lens aperture is usually as specific as the f-numbers, the ratio of focal length to effective aperture diameter. A lens typically has a set of marked f-stops that the f-number can be set to. A lower F number denotes a greater aperture opening, which allows more light to reach the film or image sensor. So you probably search other videos and you know the aperture is one of the three pillars of photography or filmmaking or taking stills or films. The other two being shutter speed and ISO, which we already covered in the previous video. Click the link and watch them. Certainly the most important one is the aperture. So where does aperture come into play? Okay, a sunset scene like this one often benefits from a narrow aperture. And if you're shooting a subject in a shade, a wider aperture will be brighter things up. As you might expect, look at this one is a standard low light practice. So an image with an f-stop of 2.8 aperture will have very little in focus. And an image with an f-stop of 16 aperture will have all of the scene in focus. The aperture has several effects on your image. One of the most important is the brightness or exposure of your image. As aperture changes in size, it alters the overall amount of light that reaches your camera sensor and therefore the brightness of your image. So, a larger aperture will pass a lot of light resulting in a brighter photograph. A smaller aperture does just the opposite making the still image very dark or making it darker. In a dark environment indoors or at night, you will probably want to select a large aperture to capture as much as light as possible. This is the same reason why your eye people delayed when it starts to get dark. The other critical effect of aperture is depth of field. Look at my background. Depth of field is the amount of photograph that appears sharp from front to back. Some images have a very thin or shallow depth of field where the background is completely out of focus. Other images have a large or deep depth of field where both the foreground and the background are sharp. So take a look at my background, it's quite blurry rather than the subject because I'm just trying to point the viewer, you, your attention to myself and I split myself from the detail in the background. So the choice of aperture playing a very big role here. I specifically use a large aperture 
let's say 2.8 to 4.5 that's my favorite is helping me bring the attention of you the viewer the subject rather than the busy background so if I want to choose a smaller number I would have not been able to separate myself myself as a subject to the background that you're saying so you will see everything in one whole shot so the way the foreground and the background autofocus highlights are rendered by the lens in the footage is often referred to as a bokeh effect and also bokeh is the property of the lens one can yield shallow depth of field with most lenses when using a large aperture and close camera to subject distance on the other hand a smaller aperture results in a very small amount of background blur which is typically ideal for some type of photography such as landscape or architecture so far we only discuss aperture in general terms like large and small however it can also be expressed as number known as the F number or F stops or T stops or T numbers. The letter F or T appearing before the number like F slash 8 or T slash. Most likely you have noticed this on your camera before or on your LCD screen or viewfinder. Your aperture will look like something like this F2, 3.5, 8 and so on. Some cameras omit the slash and write F stops like this F2, F3.5, F8, F16 and so on. Aperture is labeled in F or T numbers and in this case I'm personally using 4.5 F stops. So what's the difference between F and T? Why some cameras using F system, some cameras using T expression? What's the difference? Is there any big difference? Do we need to know about it? So what Corlin did, Corlin's design enabled full aperture viewing for accurate focus, closing to the pre-selected aperture, opening when the shutter was fired and simultaneously synchronizing the firing of a flash unit. From um, 1956, SLR camera manufacturer separately developed automatic aperture control. It's called Miranda T pressure automatic diaphragm. Miranda T features they allow viewing at the lens maximum aperture, stopping the lens down to the working aperture at the moment of exposure and returning the lens to maximum aperture afterward. The first SLR cameras with internal through the lens or TTL meters, also known as the Pentax Spotmatic, requires that the lens be stopped down to the working aperture when taking a meter reading. Subsequent models soon incorporated mechanical coupling between the lens and the camera body, indicating the working aperture to the camera for exposure while allowing the lens to be at its maximum aperture for composition and focusing. This feature become known as open aperture metering. So there is a catch. One important part of aperture that confuses beginner photographers and filmmakers more than anything else is this. This is something you really need to pay attention and to get correct at it. A small numbers represent large apertures, where large numbers represent a small apertures. What do I mean? So as you can see, the F stop like F16 stop, like F slash 16, represent a much smaller number aperture opening than something like F2.8 or F3 or F4. This caused a huge amount of confusion among all the filmmakers and photographers because it's completely the reverse of what you would and you would hear and you expect at the first sight. However, this strange as it may sound, there is a reasonable and simple explanation that should make it much clearer to you. Aperture is a fraction. So if, if you're a photographer or a filmmaker and your DOP or your cinematographer recommends a large aperture for a particular scene, they're telling you to use something like an f-stop of 1.4, 2, 3.2, 2.8. And on the other hand, if they suggest a small aperture for one of your scenes, they're recommending that you use something like f-stop of 8, 11, 16. Don't go over 22, you lose a lot of detail. So how do you know what aperture to use for your films or your photos or for the scene? Let's jump back to the exposure and depth of field, the two most important effects of aperture. First, okay, I'm going to give you a chart actually. Pause the video, take a quick look out of everything that we've already covered so far and then come back to the rest of the video. So f-stop of 0.95 or 1.4 such as fast maximum aperture are only available on premium prime lenses allowing them to gather as much light as possible. This makes them ideal for any kind of shooting when filming indoors, like if you're doing a night sky, wedding reception, portraits in dimly lit room, corporate events, things like that. With such wide f-stops, you will get very shallow depth of field at close distances where the subject will appear separated and split from the background. F-stop of 1.8, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, between them you typically get adequate depth of field for subject at close distance while they are still yielding pleasant bokeh in the background. F-stop of 2.8 to 4, 4.5, they often provide image stabilization benefits that can make them versatile. Even when shooting in low light conditions, such aperture are great for travel, sports, wildlife, 
as well as other type of photography. F stop of 5.6 to 8, this is the ideal range for landscape and architecture photography. It could also be a good range for photographing large group of people. A stopping down lens to the f-stop of 5.6 range often provides the best overall sharpness for most lenses and f-stop of 8 is used if more depth of field is required. f-stop of 11 to 16 typically used for photographing landscape, architecture at long range and macro photography where as much as depth of field as possible is needed. Be careful when stopping beyond a stop of 8 and over, you will start losing sharpness due to the effect of lens diffraction. F stop of 22 and smaller. Okay, only shoot at such a small f stops if you know what you're doing. Sharpness suffers greatly at f stop of 22 and smaller apertures, so you, you want to avoid using them as much as possible. If you need to get more depth of field, it is best to move away from your subject or use a focus stacking technique. So, you're a landscape photographer or filmmaker who want to make everything as sharp as possible, you should use your lens is the smallest aperture like 22 or 32 f-stop right no there is much less detail in f-stop of 32 footage it loses a lot of sharpness due to the diffraction okay aperture is just like a pupiline of your eye for your camera system which can open and close to change the amount of light that passes through we've already covered that everybody want to take a sharp photos one of the ways to do is to minimize the visibility of lens aberration so what are the lens aberration Quite simply that the image quality problem with the photo caused by your lens. I know the most of the problem in photography are because of the user errors such as missed focus, poor exposure or distracting composition. Lens aberration are entirely due to your equipment and nothing to do with you. There are fundamental optical problems that you're gonna notice with any lens if you look at them very closely. Well, some lenses are better than the others, but you actually gotta pay more for a better lens if you wanna avoid lens aberrations. Okay, that's all you needed to know about the aperture as a beginner. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your filmmaking squad and let them know how to use aperture as well as you learning. So good to have you back. Can't wait to make another video and see you again. See you soon.